Hi, my name's Ellie Balkin and I'm going to talk to you about the letter of will process. The very concept of representative government and democracy signifies a government by the people, for the people, through the people's representatives. The sole reason for government is to create and administer laws and services for the people which reflect the will of the people. Until now, we've believed that by voting once every few years, those we elect will strive to fulfil their obligations with our will in mind. When people are in positions of power or authority, they're expected to act to the highest standards and principles. Unfortunately, we're all waking up to the fact that this is not so, but time and time again, we've witnessed the opposite occurring out in our government. Our elected representatives are voting with their party's agenda and ignoring the will of their electorate. Our forefathers fought for our democracy and our freedom, freedoms that we've begun to take for granted in the past few generations. It's time to remember and honour their sacrifices, time to demand that our government listens to the will of our people and to ensure they adhere to both our political and human rights as they publicly proclaim to. Finally, the tide has turned and we've re rediscovered a process that we can lawfully apply to inform members of parliament of our will. You may or may not have heard about the letter of will, so today I'm going to explain, explain it and how it works and how it can be <clears throat> used to take back our political power from those who have abused it and place it firmly in the hands of the Australian people. A wise politician should continuously seek to know the will of their electorate on any issue and proposed legislation. They have no excuse for not finding out what our will is before casting a vote in Parliament and if they do not seek it from us, it's our duty to inform them of it. As we're all too, too aware, it's become apparent that our MPs are not seeking to know which way we want them to vote, nor are they in touch with what our will is on many issues currently facing the state and, and this country. We have rediscovered a process by which we can correct this and inform our MPs of our will and enforce it. When we have an issue that we want changed, we must do so through legislation. It does not matter what the catalyst to the change is, be it a petition, a protest, march or any other event, the end result is the same. Nothing changes without legislation being drafted, enacted or amended. Legislation is created or changed by a bill being drafted then presented to the parliament to be voted on. This process is the same whether it's a state or a national issue. <clears throat> so this is how it's always been done and it's the only way it's been done and knowing this we can apply the letter of will process to take back control of our MPs. So what is the letter of will process? Step one, finding an MP who will draft a bill. For each issue we want changed we'll have to identify the MP, state or federal, that's in support of it, then have them draft a bill to either amend legislation or create a bill that will establish legislation. For example, if we want to end fluoridation, we must find an MP who supports it and have him draft a bill to amend the fluoridation legislation. Step two is finding out which other MPs will vote yes and who, who's on the fence and who's no vote. This will require emails, phone calls, face-to-face -face meetings to ask them which way they would vote if the bill was presented. Each state has a different number of state MPs, so Queensland has 89 MPs and will require 45 to vote yes um, for the bill to be passed in the first reading. So step three, once we know how many we have on each side of the vote, we target the electorate of the fence sitting or the no vote MPs with our letter of will. At the end of the day, politicians are motivated by votes and winning back their seat. So what we do is collect signatures in their electorate and then when we have enough, we go to them in a meeting and show them the thousands of signatures we have from their electorate. All future letters of will will have the following statement included. I cannot conscientiously vote for anyone that does not, that's not willing to represent my will. This statement essentially tells the MP that they will lose the votes of the people in their electorate who have signed the letter of will. An MP who votes with his electorate despite his personal feelings or the party's agenda is the only kind of true representative of the people they are there to represent. We believe that any MP who is on the fence or a no vote and who sees his electorate wants the change will be able to see that unless he votes with his electorate, he'll most likely lose his seat next election. So this is the most powerful motivator for 90% of our politicians. 
So step four, once we have the required amount of MPs who vote uh, yes, and the MP who's drafting the bill can then proceed to present it for the vote and begin its journey into law. Uh, should the MP fail to vote the way their electorate wishes them to, we can use the collected letters and go above their heads, uh, so to speak, and challenge them via the High Court and even through the Governor General. So our constitution guarantees that it, it guarantees our right to challenge our parliament um, when, when it acts against the will of the people. So uh, the signed letters of will become our evidence should we need to go this route. The letter of will process is similar to that which poli political lobbyists would do for big corporations just without the letter of will. And this is what true democracy is. This is direct democracy, where the people are in charge of, of what occurs in their halls of parliament. The history of parliament and politics in Australia shows no political party, few, if any politicians and almost none of the constitutional and political textbook writers have published this information for the public. For it's knowledge that once grasped by the Australian people will mean the end of the party political control over the voice of, the, of and votes of politicians and the elimination of party dictatorship over the machinery of parliament. We're using this process, including the letter of will, to take back the power these corporations and politicians have taken from us and we will show them that we will not just sit back and quietly while they destroy our constitution and legislative process. We have our, in our hands a powerful tool to keep our elected officials informed uh, of what we want and the means to make sure they implement it. Please help us to share and educate our fellow Australians in the process. Uh, check out our Facebook page, Our Will Be Done, Restore Democracy. Uh, print and sign out, uh, print, and, print out some letters, sign some, share them with all your friends, get, get them on the networks. Um, networking is vital. So um, this, this was actually put together by my mum Sally Balkan and Lisa Weckart. Uh, and yeah, it's really important. These letters of will could change our whole system. So jump on board, thanks for listening.